Hi guys, welcome back. I'm just waiting for my tea water. Tea water? Is that how you say that? My water to boil. Um, and today I was thinking about doing something different with my videos because like, I don't know, planning feels a bit like it lacks some DIY aspects, I think. Um, and I thought I'd try and change that, you know, be the change you want to see, sort of. Um, because there's so much focus on... Ooh, my water. Where was I? Uh, yeah, uh, there's so much focus on where you buy stuff, what stuff is the best, and like you have to buy the most expensive thing. And I was looking at a um, traveler's notebook uh, because, well, I thought that looked so cool. Like, uh, you know, the normal notebooks, notebooks kinds of thingies. Uh, I'm gonna find my old one. I have a, I have this awesome uh, Moleskinner notebook, uh, which is, I, a friend of mine gave it to me for my birthday, and it's just, I've been using it for everything, and you know, it's, it's about a little over halfway, and you know what saddens me a lot about this one, is that I'm halfway, and when I'm done with it, it's it's finished. I there won't be more pages in it, and it's it's great, right? Uh, but it was gifted to me. These are expensive. So what I was going to do was I saw the traveler's notebook things, and I I was like, why do people spend so much money on these things? It's a cover for Christ's sake. It's it's like. I'm not mentioning any names, but the way that these things are treated uh, is they are super expensive. Like, I'm, I'm not even, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Like, this right here is some leather that I bought, like, almost three years ago at a uh, Viking reenactment camp, camp, market, um, which I go to every other year. Um, dressed as a viking I'm um, yeah just yeah and I thought that leather that I have used like once for to make a uh, belt purse uh, to hang in my belt at my um, in my viking costume clothes <laughs> um, I thought that Leather is just perfect, and you know what's perfect about leather? Leather, it it doesn't fray, so you could just cut it up, and it won't. I mean, I guess you could you could probably like hold a lighter or a match to it, and you know seal the edges if you want to. But when you have this and some elastic cord, you can make. A traveler's notebook uh, and also if you have some paper and some thread and needle uh, you can make inserts so this that's what I did this this is my I made five inserts It's probably a bit, bit thick really but look at this I mean I've only used like a tiny the tiniest piece of leather no the tiniest piece of leather would be me using this but um, so I thought I would show you how I made this and at the same time um, See if we can experiment and make this thing better uh, Yeah, and I'll show you how I made it and also how I made the inserts So yeah, let's get right to it um, Let's see first. I need my cutting mat because uh, I don't want to cut my table. I have been doing that and that makes it harder to take good product pictures of um, of my products when I take them. When I want to take the pictures 
I have to edit them afterwards and I have to like edit out this this hole and all the blemishes on my desk. It's uh, it's a mess. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use that and then here's the leather and I'm pretty sure I can fit like two or three more uh, Traveler's Notebooks covers in this and the thing that I love about this letter, this is the wrong side. The right side is, it looks so aged. Like, you won't get a new notebook out of this. Your notebook will look like it's been used forever. And I love that so much. Like, it has these awesome aged tears in them. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm next Viking Market, I'm just gonna have to buy more of this stuff. Um... I gotta admit to you right now, I have no idea where it came from, I have no idea how it's uh, made uh, or whether or not uh, it's like um, cruelty free or anything. I'm just, I'm gonna find that out when I, I wasn't as aware as I am now when I bought this, but you know, I have it, so let's use it. Uh, I just feel like it would be crueler to throw it out than to use it not at this point. Part. And I was thinking that this time I'll try and use this hole right here because I think that just it just screams use me like it would I just think it would look awesome. So I'm going to do that. Uh, now this notebook is made from a piece that is 21.5 um, centimeters tall and 25.5 uh, Point five around and as you can see I think that's a tiny bit small in the width so I think I'm gonna add a half a centimeter or something um, just because well I can right I I looked up um, I looked up the original Travelish notebook measurements and worked from that uh, which it's okay to do, you know, if I want to buy some original inserts, I could fit them in here, that's, that's the idea, anyway, um, so yeah, let's do this, um, I'm gonna flip this over, oh my god, this feather is so great, anyways, uh, I'm gonna flip this over, and start working, let's do this, so I have this awesome ruler over here, it's metal and long. It's 60 centimeters long, which is like awesome. Um, I, I was also thinking about using this, you know, to make it this edge right here because it's it's a little bit frayed and I don't know, but um, that would be for another time. I have another edge over here that looks just, it's just screams to be used, you know? Like people want their stuff to look aged and you know the easiest way to do that is to use old materials um just saying so like first of all this hole right here i need to figure out where i want it in, on my journal and i would like it to be like sort of in a corner or something um like over here uh, or maybe, maybe just like on the edge that would, you know, you want to get the most out of your materials. So, and I know that this is a somewhat straight line. I think I'm going to draw it up again. Um, just to, you know, so that I know that this is a straight line. Because if you start with the straight line, you can never go wrong, really. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, any like. Does this work? I used this pencil last time and that just disappeared. So I really. Yeah, that, this worked perfectly. So now we have a straight line, which is great. And what did I say? I wanted to add like half a centimeter, centimeter on the width of the thing 
Um, that's what I'm gonna do, which means we'll get 26 centimeters uh, in the width of the cover. Um, so, okay, I have too much mess outside of the frame here. It's just my desk is a mess. Um, it, well, it's what happens when I craft, really. Um, let's see. So, I wanna have, I wanna use as much as I can of the material because if I do that, I can maybe. Maybe I could make more than one or two. I could fit more into it. Um, so I want this to be the width, I think. Yeah, this is the width. And then I'm going to make the height, which is 210. No, 215. The inserts are 210. Um, that's millimeters for you. Um, so, 21 and a half centimeters um, from up there. That's going to be like I could do this, like, I could make this video uh, and then just do a voiceover but you wouldn't get my thought process in that and that was what I'm what I wanted to take you with me on my thought process um so the width of the cover when it's flat should be 26 centimeters um or at least that's what I decided on in the end um now I just gotta have some tea. This right here is the piece we are using. So you can see that I will get at least, I think I'll get two more of these on this piece of leather that I've got. And I think I bought this leather, leather at the market for like 300 Norwegian kroners. So now I'm getting out my uh, wallpaper knife and I'm gonna, I just broke off a piece so that the point will be nice and pointy. <laughs> uh, that's what these are for. Just remember to throw them out right away so you don't cut yourself on them in the future. And now I'm gonna cut this. This is our cover, basically. Uh, I'm gonna drink some more tea. Sorry, not sorry. So the cover will look like this when finished. Uh, I think um, on my first one, I rounded the corners and I think that looks great. The only thing is that my inserts are sort of sticking out in the corners. Um, so yeah, so I'm not sure if I'll do that right away. I think I want to think about it and look how this, it turns out so great. Um, it's just this leather and it's soft and sturdy at the same time and it doesn't fray. And if you make this in like fabric, you'll have to sew around, uh, and you have to have a lining and a outer fabric and it will be so much more work <laughs> I'm just not uh, so yeah this is how it is you know you could this is basically a traveler's notebook all we need to do is uh, poke some holes and 
uh, and tie elastic around it through them. So, um, and with leather, that's actually a bit harder than with fabric because with fabric you could just use an awl. You could use an awl and just poke through, and you will, and the hole will be bigger. Like it's way easier to use use an awl uh, on fabric than on leather. Um, but the um, we chose leather, so we have to use leather. So as we remember, this is 26 centimeters wide. So I'm gonna find the middle, which is at 13 centimeters, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep using this until it dies on me. So that's the center, and then we want to center on the other side as well. So that's the center, and now if I had some chalk. Yes, I found my tailor's chalk. That's going to make my life way easier, but um, you could keep using a pen or a pencil or like a marker or really anything. <laughs> Seriously, just you do you and use what you have available. I mean, it's DIY, you figure it out. So, now we mark. The middle. And this is chalk, so if I go like this, it'll it'll erase pretty easily, pretty fast. On fabric it's even more erasable. Um so yeah. I want the part with the hole to be my front the front of my cover. At the moment, so this is how it's going to be. Now we want to find the middle of this to put our elastic, the closing elastic. Yeah, I'm gonna call it the closing elastic uh, through um, because that's the middle of the spine. And our height is two, 21 and a half centimeters which means that our center of that should be at 10 and 3 quarters, right? I think. I need to think about that. 21 is 10 and a half, and then, yeah, it's, um, it's 10 and 3 quarters, and this ruler has got half millimeters, which is crazy. I usually just eyeball that, but now I have a tool to help me with that. Six, seven and a half. I mean, you don't need to be this exact. Uh, so here's my center. That's the center of the spine. So let's just go ahead and use our awl or pokey tool, poke tool or whatever you want to use, like you could use just a needle, but uh, the great thing about the awl is I've also seen something that I really want. It's this awesome Asian kind of tool, Chinese maybe, um, that just you just push and then you've got this perfect hole. But anyways, um, this is not right. This is not the center. See, you need to remember to check that out. Yeah, this is not right at all. It should be on 10 and 3 quarters, not 11 and 3 quarters. See, I make mistakes all the time, in fact. So, now just poke your all through the center of your entire thing. And see, this is pretty hard to do. Like, I have to really use some elbow grease in this. So, just keep working it until you feel like you have a hole that's big enough for your needs. I'm going to try something new this time. Um, because the last time I just... I just took uh, the elastic, I 
took the elastic and I measured out about the circumference of my book and then took a little bit less than that and then I just um, thread it through the hole and then back through the holes to make a loop and then just tie the end together on the inside. This time I sort of I wanted the elastic to be a little bit wider um, and the only wider elastic that I have on hand is uh, uh, this white sort of wide elastic like this one and I just didn't feel like that would uh, fit as well as I wanted it to so I'm going to try something else um, which is I'm going to try and braid elastic um, and then loop that through uh, the hole which um, I'm going to need a bigger hole you know but we'll figure this out it's going to be fun I like doing new things on camera so let's just braid you know normally three strand bra braid the way you do in your hair hair uh, it's probably easier if you have something to tie it to but I don't at the moment so I'm just gonna braid <laughs> yeah maybe I should tie a tie or something elastic look at that I'm just gonna tie a knot on the end here as well to keep the braid intact I might open it up on a later time I don't know this is the kind of DIY video I want to make with you guys like I want to um, I want to make one thing and then I want to make and the same thing thing another once more just um, just trying to better the thing that I've already made like like this like I felt like the it needed a wider band so I'm gonna make one yeah that will look great so now to get it through the hole in the leather uh, and you could probably you can tell right away that that elastic won't come through this hole um, it's just not gonna happen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pair of scissors and I'm gonna see if I can carve a bigger hole I don't want to make the hole too big but I don't want it to be too small either so and again this is what I like about the leather uh, as opposed to using fabric for instance um, like you'd have to put in an eyelet if you like a washer and um, a grommet um, in in fabric you would have to do that and with leather you just cut at it really ah. so is this opening big enough now I'm still not too sure about that How about now? Maybe. And here's a trick. If you want to know, know a trick. So you take something, you take a piece of thread and you um, loop it on the needle and then you tie it to the cord. Um, And then let's see. 
tie to the cord using a simple double knot the way you learn in Scouts, in Girl Scouts. And then here, you're going to go through from the back through the hole and you're going to drag the entire thing, thing over to your side. You want to have the... Hmm. Let me see. Let's start over. Not over. You want to drag this knot through the fabric or the leather before you drag the... Just drag it through here. It's going to take some... No, it didn't. It came through pretty easily and fast. That's a new one. Something going right on the first try. Now just drag it through all the way through and now I was thinking that I would open up the knot, at least one of them, and braid. I'm gonna cut off the excess right here like this. Trying to keep my workspace clean. So, like this. And like this hole should be a tiny bit too small, just so that the elastic will stay in place. And now you can see we can loop it over like this. And you have a wide braid of elastic. Very great. Yeah, that's nice. And now for the, what you call it, the binding elastic. Because the Traveler's Notebook works uh, this way. Um, you have an elastic that goes uh, around this, and this I've made um, two holes there and two holes there. I'm thinking that I'll place the holes right next to each other instead of over and under each other um, on the new one uh, and then you loop the the elastic through the holes so that they just stick out a little bit on the spine and then they have two elastics that goes through and then you just loop your inserts through the elastic like this uh, and then there is a trick to um, that will give you two inserts, uh, space for two inserts in one book. Uh, and then there's a trick to it to fit more of them in. I'm going to show, show off that later. Um, so now we got that one done. Now we want to do the, the next elastic. Um, and so you want the holes to be like at least three quarters of uh, a centimeters centimeter uh, from the edge, uh, which is right So now what I want to do is put the elastics in but you know you're gonna need your trusty all um, I want there to be like I know I want the holes to be half a centimeter from the each from the spine so right there and right there like that and then the same on the other side So, now I poke four holes. So, that's those holes. Okay, so my awl, it's pretty pointy, right? Uh, and when I bought it, it came with this champagne cork to protect the awl. Uh, I, and I have... I haven't gotten over that, uh, like, you use a champagne cork. 
Um, yeah, now we have to break out our needle again. Where did it go? Oh my god, did I lose my needle? I can't lose my needle. It's a good thing to know where you've got your stuff. So, what I did, you know, you don't want to waste any elastic because you don't want to waste anything really. But, so you thread, you do not cut the elastic because you could, this way you know you get the right amount. So, oh, so you work on this to poke it through. This was hard. Use stuff. And then just, when you get through, you go out to through this hole and then back into this hole. And then you wanna go out through this hole. And then back in through this hole. And you wanna you want to make these elastics not too loose, but not too tight either. You want to make them just right. Like, I guess this. And then, as you can see, I have way too much elastic here and we don't want to waste any. So you just pull on this one to drag some out till you get like the right amount here. And then you do the same over here. like this and then bam you're not wasting any any elastic or you're wasting less elastic like this and then just tie these two off this and now honestly you know, just uh, snip off the excess here now honestly your traveler's notebook is now finished Seriously, this is how easy it is. Uh, like you could say that now this is this is it. It's okay. I'm finished. It'll work perfectly like this um, because you know you can put your inserts in here and you've got your loop to close the close to a notebook and it's all done. Uh, we all love to make stuff ourselves, right? Yeah, and I still want to round the corners because I feel like they are too pointy. You don't have to. You don't have to do this. Exactly like you don't have to braid this thing. You could just make it out of any old. You could just do this, right? Make it easy on yourself. Seriously. Um, but you know you could. Now you could just. Slide your insert in here and be done with it. You know? Um, but there's so much. There are so. This is the easiest way. This is. It's easy. But there are so many things that you could do right now. Like, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to uh, round the corners and I'm going to do that by. Um, by placing something round in the corner, like this, and then tracing the outer rim, and then uh, uh, cutting that off. Like this. So that's the corners cut off. So that's that, and now you wanna you you wanna just make sure that you like what you make. Like seriously, if you made something that you don't like, it's a waste of time. Uh, and like, I'm actually really proud of this at the moment. Uh, I'm going to show you something else. I mean, this is a traveler's notebook. I'm just going to go get my passport. 
you want to have an elastic that's about this big. So we're trying things that I haven't thought this through yet. Um, which is probably not what you want to do on your DIY with video, but it's how my thought process goes. Go like, hey, I should try this before I start doing anything else. So here's a an elastic. Uh, now I could tie this around this insert right here. Could I? Is the elastic big enough? The elastic is big enough, but is it tight enough? That's the question. It is probably not. No, it's not. You want the you want it to be the same height as the passport. So if you want to have a how did I do this? Yeah, now I'm having a tiny piece of... Uh, yeah, that's a mess, but hey, I'll figure that out later. Um, if you want to fit your passport in, I think I'm going to do that right now. Just got to get these insert out of here. Now, how would I do this? This is the elastic that I used earlier for the... Passport insert elastic mess. Um, and I want it to be this big. And I want it to be... So... The way that I would do this... Oh, I know. I know now. Um, you want to place your passport like this. And you want to poke a hole through in both the corners of your passport and then poke through like this and right there and then the same right beneath it and right above it And now you want to tie a knot. Let's see. Yeah, this is big enough. You want to tie a knot on the end. Like so. You might want to double. Double knot. But I'm going to see if I. If one is enough. And you want to. Thread your needle. With the elastic. Which apparently I can't do at the moment. There we go. And you want to through the top hole like so. And then the knot will stop it and then back into the hole. And then the top of these right here. And then out through the and through that one again. Like this. And now you want to tie a knot. And I think I'm going to tie it around this one. Not around this one. Around this one. Like this. Like so. You might want to do that with this one as well. I think I'm going to. It will look better, I think. Now snip the excess off. And you have an elastic that's perfect for your passport. And now you can put, just put the other inserts in here like this and then 
this thing, oh, this thing around this thing, like this, and then this through here. Bam! Traveler's note notebook for traveling with your passport inside. And then on the in the passport control, you just slide it out again. Ooh, yeah, you need to do this in the middle of the book and not in the... Like, no one uses... No one ever stamps their passports anymore, so I don't know why it's such a big book. There we go. Hey, hey. I like it. It's nice. Yeah, slide it out. Show it to the person, the guy who needs this, and then you get it back and put it back in. So, and you'll always know where your passport is. That's nice. And also, it doesn't look that weird in the spine. The spine looks good. Still looks awesome. Maybe even better if you ask me. So, this, that's that. Now I want to try something else. Let's see if I have the materials. I probably have. Let's uh, let's be honest. I'm a material hoarder, so I probably have the materials to make what I want to make. That's just how my world works. Like that, and that. I want to make a pocket over here. Um, so let's see if I have any leather. Any excess leather. Yeah, that's going to be nice, and I get to use this. Uh, that's nice. Um, so, let's see. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get out my ruler. Where did it go? There it is. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna place the leather that I'm using along the lines here, and then I'm gonna. Place the ruler along the spine, and then maybe, maybe over here, so that it won't cover the holes that we made over here. Um, like this, and now, and I want to cut that off. I'm making the pocket. Didn't think that I would today, but I will. Now, this could be in any old uh, material, but you know, I had the excess, excess uh, leather, and also I think that would look great. So, now I need to uh, round Round it, round it the way that I rounded the other, and I'm just going to use it as a template like this. Now, this is going to look awesome. Now, I'm gonna sew along this line there and then up here. And in any other fabric, I would use my sewing machine, but uh, I can't sew with my sewing machine would not like leather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the awl and the, um, and a needle, uh, preferably a needle that's the same size as the awl. Uh, and I'm going to use some leather cord that I have lying around. So what do I want to use? I think I want to use this. It's the same cord that I used for my um, Viking purse. Um, I say purse, but it's more like a bag. It's um, uh, it's attached to my belt, and it has my stuff in it. So I'm going to make this. 
you can make it however you want. Um, I'm going to keep saying that until you get it. <laughs> um, I want to make like the stitches go around. Um, and I want to make them fairly even spaced. So I'm just going to do this. Freehand it. I'm going to freehand it. I think that will look better. But about, let's say, a little less than a centimeter spaced, or maybe half a centimeter. Like this. And I'm going to do this all along the line that I want to. And then when I get here, I'm probably just go out and in of the fabric over here. We'll see. So moment of truth, yeah, all the holes turned. Now I'm gonna gonna go over these holes and poke through them so that they're a little bit wider. Um, this is going to take some time. <laughs> The spacing of the holes is deliciously uneven since it's done freehand and by eye. Uh, I just love that. Now, how much of this do I need? Um, I mean, like this much? This is me guessing. It's a guesstimation of how much I need. Just, I'm gonna, it's about, let's see, how long is my, I'll say it's about 175 centimeters or something. I've just threaded it with a needle. And then I'm going to, yeah, how am I going to do this? I wanna... Um, hmm. I wanna start by going out on this side, like this. And I wanna go down there like this that will look good yeah I think so I think that will look good I think I want to go through one more time if the needle will allow me Like, 
that and then I ju I'm just gonna go down here through this and down the next hole until I reach the corner of this thing so let's do that Now I just want to do a normal stitch, you know, going up and down over here. And when I get to the end, I'm going to take a stand on whether or not to go back down to make a, a whole drawn line over there. Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> That's the beauty of just doing things. Uh, you, you have all the freedom in the world to do everything just just do everything the way that it presents itself, you know? Uh, tackle everything as it comes. Ooh. Hmm. There's a new one. Okay, so here's the thing that happened. The last hole makes the tread um, end on the outside. Uh, I'm going to tackle that by just poking a hole over here on top and just, come on, there we go. I'm just poking the needle back through here and then, let's see, yeah, only through the top layer of the last hole over here. like so and then I'm gonna make a knot although this string right here this thread uh, is waxed so um, uh, the thread will probably stay there uh, even if I didn't tie a knot it's uh, this turned out so great. And I used about half of the string that I um, prepared. So, there we go. And I got that. Oh, this is... Okay, this looks so deliciously old school. Um, uh, I, I can't get over it at the moment. Now, in this pocket, you could keep anything. I mean... You could probably, yeah, I can fit my passport in there if I didn't want to make this little uh, elastic over here. Or, you know, boarding passes or whatever you like. Like, it's a fairly big pocket, I would say. And, you know, it's, um, it's tight. It's, uh, the leather doesn't have much give, so... Um, you won't lose anything. If you put your passport in here, I think there is a smaller chance of losing it if, if it's in the pocket than if it's in the elastic. Just, just saying. Um, so, yeah. So, is there anything else that I want to make on this? I'm not sure. <laughs> now, um, the leather is, um, it's very, uh, what's the word? Uh, it'll, stuff will make marks on it. You know, you could just use your nail and you will get a mark on the, and it's not possible to get rid of it. I think you, if you did some, if you had some wax or something, you would, or water, no, not water, uh, but maybe wax or, uh, like oil or something would fix that but you know it's fun you could use your something to like you could if your penmanship is nice you would uh, 
you could write on yeah, uh, write your name on there or just make some waves or you know you could use it you could poke holes and make stuff that's the thing you can do as well uh, I've seen it uh, places on leather uh, you know using holes as decorative elements um, because the leather um, focus the leather leather um, it changes color uh, when you poke through it uh, it becomes lighter in color and I don't know why it just does and that's awesome uh, and I mean you could do anything about with this uh, it's super fun like you could just lighten your your notebook is it doing this although um, once you've done it there's no way back you know uh, so I'm just gonna keep mine uh, as it is for a while uh, and also you know uh, putting it in your bag uh, stuff will bump into it and it'll look more worn and awesome the more you use it right um, like this will bend the right way and the cover will get softer in time and everything is uh, great uh, so that's the cover now let's make some inserts um, I made some inserts for my first uh, notebook uh, but and, and I mean this notebooks the old one it feels way less awesome right now uh, <laughs> Uh, after making the new one with the pocket and everything it just this old one feels less awesome uh, but that's the nature of making stuff oh. um, now I made these inserts um, and they're sort of or they're nice uh, they are made from different kinds of paper um, like I have this is sort of nice paper and I printed a dotted grid um, you could there's a pay, uh, there's a website uh, that lets you that makes and lets you download PDFs of um, different kinds of grid paper like this dotted and this uh, lined paper and I've also got this uh, squared square lined grid paper uh, the only drawback to the, that is that they have this watermark that goes on the uh, in the middle of the page, um, and you know you don't get the margins exactly. The top and the bottom don't really fit, but that's there are ways around that. I just didn't care too much. Um, and then I have this, it's a uh, nice paper, nice, uh, good quality, uh, awesome, you know, you get some sort of paper gas, I'm just touching this. It's white, it's brightened, uh, I think it's about 75 gram, maybe even 100. And then this is, uh, my sketch paper, sketchbook paper. Um... And I've used, for covers, I've used uh, uh, different kinds of scrapbook paper that I just had lying around. Again, uh, this I made once. Uh, I drew this uh, after a stamp that I have, I think. Yeah. Uh, and this is, uh, this is something that I made um, for my uh, painter's finals when I did that in high, in, not in high school, in college. Um, uh, I just, I had it as, I cut it down to size, uh, 12 by 12 inch, um, scrapbooking paper size, uh, just because I thought that I wanted to use this as a scrapbook, uh, background once, but it's too busy for that, and I just, I loved it like this. It doesn't really fit the overall, none of these covers fit the overall wornness of the cover, but you know, who cares? Um, 
but I thought I'd make a um, a few inserts to go in this one just to show off how it's done and how you can do it. Um, I'm going to print out some lined paper and some uh, dotted grid paper, I think. Uh, and I'm also going to make one that's just use where I just use white. Um, uh, white sketchbook paper. Um, so yeah, if you want to see how that's done, we're going to saddle stitch uh, the um, inserts um, using thread and a needle. And we're still going to use my awl because the awl is awesome. So yeah, I'm going to print some stuff and uh, then uh, we'll make inserts. Okay, so I um, printed some of the graph paper that I was talking about earlier. Uh, so I just printed double-sided uh, on regular old copy paper. This is um, the lined one. Here's a uh, dotted grid one. You could... Um, I'm going to link that, um, that site in the thing where you can... Um, make um uh, it makes um the um, graph paper and stuff out of from your uh, um however you want it to you can uh tell it how big you want the paper to be how many lines per inch all of those things um so I would probably, if I were going to make another dot, dotted grid uh, thing, I would make at least one more uh, square per uh, inch. So, but anyways, uh, this, uh, this, these are both just uh, regular old printer paper. And then I decided to go ahead and make some of uh, my uh, sketchbook paper. And then in the end, I'm going to make a, uh, ex a, something of um, these watercolor pages and but you can see these are like heavy duty um, it's 300 grams uh, per square meter uh, paper so it's super sturdy and so the insert won't be as it won't have as many pages so um, before the uh, for the copy paper one you print out 10 pages this will give you 40 because every page that you print will give you four pages um, or two spreads if you want um, uh, so and this is when this thing comes in handy because the inserts that we are making are uh, going to be uh, 21 inches tall which is the same as uh, the A4 paper that I have in my printer and it's going to be when folded it's going to be uh, 11 centimeters wide so we are cutting these down uh, to 22 centimeters wide and uh, when you print lined paper uh, you want to print it um, with the lines horizontally uh, so that when you fold it it will be the right way because a normal uh, A4 lined paper will have the lines going this way so when you fold it they will be uh, vertical uh, and you don't want that so um, but uh, as you can see there's a small margin on each side I'm going to trim that off and uh, this baby is fitted um, with a, a new blade so that it'll go smooth uh, I'm going to cut two pages uh, each time um, and I'm going to cut off the margin first uh, like this and then 22 centimeters and I'm using the ruler on this thing so oh.
So that is 10 pages of lined paper. Um, now you want to fold and stitch. And I'm going to show you how to do that with this one and then I'm just going to fast forward through the rest of them. Um, now copy paper is... Um, when there's 10 of them, uh, it's pretty sturdy actually. Uh, what I want to do is I want to fold five at the same time. Um, so you have to fold twice. Um, this is when I need my bone folder. You don't have to use a bone folder, I just happen to have one. Um, yeah, if I can find it, that is. There it is. Your bone folder. Uh, it's. It's just a fancy tool to fold stuff or make the creases perfect. Um, you could use like a spoon or a knife or just your fingers or a ruler or anything really. So we are making, basically making uh, signatures. Uh, if you've ever bound a book, you know what that means. Um, when I make signatures uh, to make books, uh, I usually have four sheets of paper in each, in each signature and then I do eight signatures per book. So, but this is basically a signature, right? You have lined paper and you know what? You don't have to do anything more fancy about this. I'm going to stitch them but I'm going to show you how, how and why you don't have to be fancy about it because this is a booklet. You could just slide it in here and there's not much, not anything more to it. You know, you have a perfectly fine booklet here. Um, but if you want it to be a little bit, a little bit more sturdy and, um, you know, just look nicer, um, you want to have a cover and you want to uh, stitch it. So I'm going to choose a cover first. I'm going to use um, my uh, block of uh, one colored scrapbooking paper. Let's see. Uh, this thing. And I want to make, I want to use uh, the ones that, you know, um, I want to make it so that it'll match, sort of match the way the cover is. Um, so I'm thinking about really, I don't know at the moment, I'm just going to see. But you know, this uh, this side of the paper is sort of, uh, it has a canvasy structure and the other side is more flat. Um, and using these you could, you could do a lot of things with them. Um, you could like, you could use sandpaper on it, which show off. You could just, you could use a piece of sandpaper and just sand it and it'll be, it'll look older right away. Um, and it has like a thousand colors. I'm going to see if I can find some, this yellow is nice. Uh, and also the whites in the back. A little bit too bluish, but this is nice. It's going to look good with uh, together with the. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna rip out a few sheets. Okay, I broke the next one. Oh well. Um, is there any left? It's not. So now we have now I have four scrapbooking paid pay, pay scrapbooking paper uh, sort of neutral colored because um, I wanna I wanna keep in line with the um, niceness of the cover that I made. So we're going to make these into the same size as the inserts the the pages of the inserts. So 21 by 22 centimeters.
and then we fold this in half as well. I like to check just that I have the right side up because it will uh, it's just sort of my thing. Now here we go. This is an insert. Now I'm gonna stitch it. Um, let's see, I need like white or maybe brown. So I usually just use a uh, regular old um, um, uh, embroidery floss for stitching stuff. Um, because it's perfectly okay. Um, you could just like, you could staple it with staples or you could run this thing, thing through your sewing machine. Um, anything really. Um, but I like the stitched look. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, Now you can put it into your traveler's notebook. You could do that or if you want to you can see uh, this is called creep uh, because when you fold um, paper that is the same size in two they will creep um, a little bit. Over here you see if you can get the camera to focus. There we go. Um, from the, the middle paper will uh, be have the crease uh, further out than the uh, the cover so you get this little thing you could either just not let it bother you which is what I like to do or you could use your ruler and knife where did it go and your paper knife and just line it up and just cut through it all like a few times. Um, I tend to get a uh, bit... It tends to be not entirely straight for me when I do that. My preferred uh, way of doing this, at least when you have... when you're making a uh, book block, uh, a signature block, uh, is just to use some sandpaper and just sand it down. It's what I'm going to do now. Just, you know, a little bit, so the point won't be as prominent. Um, no, the point isn't too prominent. So you do you, decide what you want to do. That's the first, uh, that's the first insert that I'm making it as I said it has 40 pages 40 pages um, and it's just you know regular good old lined paper notebook I did something weird now I have four four inserts for my awesome new Revolution notebook and I have this thing to fix it. So let's see. Um, it's like what do you want in the front and what do you want in the back and I'm going to sand this a little bit more first. Like so now Now it's like, what do you want in the front, what do you want in the back, how do you want to do this? Uh, I think that I want the lined in the front and then the dotted one and then the sketch paper one and then the 
watercolor paper one. Um, like, I think that the watercolor papered one, you might want to take out from the cover uh, while you use it, uh, because it's so heavy duty and, you know, using watercolor on this would be, uh, I don't know, you might want to, you might not, um, you do you. So, um, let's do... Uh, Let's do this. So I'm going to do the lined one first, like that, and then the sketchbook paper one on this thing, and then I'm going to put this elastic around this one to put the um, watercolor paper in here and the dotted paper here if I can find them in what it is so there you have it it's I I have no words because this is easily one of the coolest things that I've made in a good long while. Uh, and also, I could put my passport in here if I wanted to, which is awesome as well. And then I could have my pen could just slide it in here like this and it'll stay there or maybe I could put this in in here that might work as well or you know you could use a um, an elastic a piece of elastic and just loop right here to make a pen holder you could do anything really do it however you like. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, and I'm sorry if it's so long because I know it is. <laughs> it's super long, but um, I'm sort of sorry and sort of not. Uh, but you know, uh, make things. Seriously, it's the number one advice I have to anyone: make things. And think about when you see something cool, think about how could I make that myself? And if the answer is way, that's way too hard, you know, you could buy it. If uh, the answer is a I know how, do it. And especially if you have the materials on hand. I mean, like at the moment, I, I went out and bought the black. Uh, elastic because I only had white elastic um, so I made it I made the first one uh, with the white elastic uh, the first time around and I just felt like the white it was such a stark contrast stark contrast to the red le leather so I went out and bought some black and that cost me like not too much um, less than a new new one, you know. Um, and this one, I'm in love. Like it's it's the first time in a very long time that I'm truly in love with something physical that I made like this. Um, so that's awesome. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like to see more of my uh, stuff, planner related stuff, I might do more DIY stuff as well because this went so well. Um, but yeah, uh, just subscribe if you want to see more. Tell me what you want to see more of. Uh, I do uh, 
I do plan with me at the moment. That's my main thing. So, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Toodles.